I was asked to make some lifestyle or life advice type videos. Somebody thought I might be good at that and suggested I do it. I seem to be holding up pretty well for, for my age. So, what do I think is important? I think that living a long time, being alert, clear, and excited about life is very important. That's my goal. I want to fill every day as joyfully and happily and pleasantly as I can. I want to be better today than I was yesterday and that I was last year. I want this time to be the very best time of my life. Everybody probably knows people who peaked in high school. <laughs> And ever since high school, it's been a downhill affair. I was so low in high school. I could live 300 years. And I'm sure I would be continually going up. I did not start out on the top by any means. It's a joy to me to see young people who are raised in good families and are steered along the way so that they can be happy and productive as young people. Something I had no concept of until I became 21 or so. It was only when I was 21 I began to realize that I had control over my life and I could actually do things and boy once I learned that I just took off. I was in the military overseas when I began taking college courses and I found that I could pass these courses and I would study a little bit I'd take tests. When I got out of the service, I had three years worth of college credits. <laughs> and that's pretty good since I was only in the service three and a half years. And I graduated college with a bachelor's degree a year after I, I got out of the service. So now, what is important for people? First thing, get rid of all bad habits. Bad habits will end your life way too early. And I consider Ginger having saved my life when I was about 34 years old by discovering a wrecked truck on the highway. And this wrecked truck contained orange juice, five alive, all kinds of different juices in this concentrated frozen uh, form. Ginger stopped off. She had a garbage bag in her car, a big garbage bag. And the people on the wreck site said, take all the uh, juice you want. <laughs> So Ginger packed up a huge garbage bag full of Five Alive, orange juice, grapefruit juice, lemonade, and, and whatever else there was available. She brought that home. And somehow she got me to agree to drink Five Alive instead of beer. And at 34, that was really the turning point of my life health-wise. 
I had begun exercise and running a few years before that, but I hadn't really done anything about eating or drinking. And I drank a good bit of beer, I must say, and no telling what else as a young, a young lad in the service and right out of service. Fact is, my father was an alcoholic, died at the age of 58, but was really useless uh, many years before that. And the fact of his alcoholism affects me to this day as it does everybody else in my family. It is such a tragedy to be around an alcoholic that I can't hardly even describe it. I don't think that I would have ever been an alcoholic because I, if I was going to be an alcoholic, I think I would have already picked it up before age 34 since I had been around enough booze to be affected by it. But drinking beer, liquor, is not healthy. It's not good for you. It erodes your brain. And by the time that you're my age, you become a little soft in the head. That's what I think. I may be wrong. It may not apply to everybody. But that's what I think. My brother-in-law used to jump out of airplanes. And he was paratrooper in the service, many jumps. And by the time he was my age, he was on the decline mentally. And I think that it's kind of like taking a concussion. All these jumps will wear on you. It's like Muhammad Ali, the boxer. You can't be messing with your brain. And you can mess with your brain by getting a concussion, repeated blows, or alcohol, in my opinion. So I consider the fact that Ginger got me to agree to give up drinking beer and drink uh, fruit juice <laughs> saved my life. Things would have been different. Things would have been a lot different if I hadn't given up alcohol. Alcohol takes away your inhibitions. And when you drink, you eat, you gain weight, you don't care, you're footloose, fancy free. People die every year from car accidents, from having too much to drink and no telling what else. Marriages dissolve. So let's, let's look at our habits first. Get rid of all bad habits. Smoking is a detestable and awful habit. I watched my mother in the last few years of her life go blind from smoking. What does it do to your lungs? Give it up. Give it up. She said, this, this is my only vice. I'm going to smoke. It's my only one. I don't do anything else wrong. <laughs> the doctor didn't get around to telling my mom definitely to quit smoking until she was like 88 and was already way past any kind of... Uh, Well, she was not going to, to regain her sight and all of the things she lost because of smoking. It's an awful habit. It's a terrible habit. And there are more habits that I could tell you about. Gambling, drugs, crazy behavior, mountain climbing. <laughs> I'm sorry. If the goal is to live long, 
don't aspire to climb Mount McKinley and Mount Everest. Don't become a marathon runner. That's the ever-pressing pounding. Live moderately with moderate exercise, but exercise every day. Eat right. Eat right, which includes drink right, is the number one thing. I mean, after you have gotten rid of all these awful habits, eating right is so important. I think about it every day. And my rule is no junk food. I don't eat sugar. I detest sugar. I think that sugar is evil. I can just see all these thumbs down for Davis. But you know what? It's okay. Because this will strike a chord with someone. And who knows, may turn their life around. You can do that, you know. I don't know why people eat the food they do. Get rid of the bad habits. Eat right. Exercise every day. Find an exercise you love and do it. Especially try to get out in nature. If you can't get out in nature, exercise anyway. But if you can do it in nature, it doubles your benefit. Because you get out, you get away, you let the trees and the air and the grass and the wind rebuild your spirit. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is find something you love to do. Spend as much time as you can every day doing things that just thrill your heart. Spend as little time as possible doing things you hate. And as much time as you can doing things you love. Keep your brain active. Think, study, write, have projects, set goals, think of yourself as successful. something more than what we're doing now and we can do things differently and turn things around anytime we want so there this gives you some food for thought things to think about people ask for some life advice that's the best I can give and my advice doesn't change. It will be the same if you ask me a week or a month from now. Get rid of those bad habits. What is your nemesis? What is bringing you down? Ginger had a boss at her last business who was way overweight. 
she had to scoot around in a little cart. She, could, she couldn't walk around the workplace anymore. And she was younger than Ginger, but she had had a weight issue her whole life. I mean, a serious one. And she told Ginger how her mother had actually cultivated that awful way of thinking and living in her to where she had no power to change. Gosh, it's exactly like being an alcoholic. You have this grave, awful habit that is with you your whole life and then you die with it. Why not find a way to break that habit, rise above it? I think that is one of the best things a person could do.